Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we praise and glorify your holy name. Today it is our honor and privilege to thank you for your unconditional love, forgiveness, guidance and direction, faithfulness and continued blessings. Father God, we are grateful for your love and goodness toward us. Help us to recognize it accept it, and embrace it. It leads to life far beyond what we could hope or imagine. Your only Son gave his life for us to pay the price for our sins and so that we could be with you in eternity. Despite our faults, you are always reaching out to love us unconditionally. Forgive us when we fail to love others as you love us. Give us the ability to see the needs of the difficult people in our lives and show us how to love them and meet those needs in a way that pleases you. You are the ultimate example of love. Dear God, thank you for your gift of forgiveness. You are merciful to us in spite of our faults and failures. Give us the courage to confess and repent of our sins. You will be faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We are sorry for the way we complain about our circumstances and our bad attitude at times. Forgive us for everything we have done, said, or thought that is not pleasing to you. Father, through your strength, empower us to forgive others as wholly and completely as you forgave us. Almighty God, in this season of COVID, natural disasters and upheaval, 
we humbly seek your guidance and direction in Barbados and worldwide. We may not understand why things are happening in our lives, but being able to surrender to you is so wonderful. I encourage you to place your life in God's hand, for he has the whole world in his hands, including you and me. Loving Father, we lift up to you those countries in need. Special mention must be made of Haiti, who experienced a double whammy. Many persons are overwhelmed. Life is chaotic. Minds are flooded with doubt and fear. And there is a dire need for medical supplies and food. We believe that you can cut through all the pressures and fears that life has thrown their way. Have mercy on them, O oh God. Lord Jesus, we release our children and young people to your care and protection. They are precious and the future leaders of Barbados. We humbly ask that you align their direction with your desires so that they may accomplish all that you desire. Father God, give us wisdom for how to parent well. Give us peace in your goodness towards them and your love for us. Dear God, you are the light of the world. Help us to follow you, believe in you, and accept your will for our lives. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our trust. Continue to use us to do your will. Continue to bless us that we may be a blessing to others. Keep us strong that we may help the weak. Keep us uplifted that we may have words of encouragement for others. Help us to remember that there is no problem circumstance or situation that is greater than God. God, we love you and we need you. Hear our prayer in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we bow in your presence this evening, and we ask that you be with us as we study your word, and as we look for direction and encouragement 
in our lives. We remember those at this time who are in need of one sort or another. Persons who are in need of a friend. Persons who are in need of healing. Persons who are fearful of what will happen the next minute, the next day. Persons who are facing all sorts of unlikely choices and are looking for help and comfort. Be with them, Lord, and be with us as we look to you for directions, help, encouragement in all that we do and say. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. I will read for you a passage from the Gospel of John, chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. As he walked along, as Jesus that is, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who were had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then, how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. Continuing with verse 24. So for the second time, they called the man who had been born blind. And they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses. But as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, here is an astonished thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Ending at verse 33. We are thinking of Jesus as the healer. We are the healed. We are the ones requiring healing. We are all in need of healing of some sort. Our bodies, our minds, our souls are in need of healing. The world itself is in need of healing. Not only do diseases, pestilence, war, pandemics, epidemics surround us, but misinformation is also doing much to threaten and even to take away our wholeness. We all want to be whole and complete, and the Christian's goal is to be holy, H-O-L-Y, entire in wholeness of body, mind, and soul, and following Christ our leader. 
We live in a society where healthy bodies have been put at risk because of, and not only of disease and so on, but because of man's inhumanity to man, because of immorality, because of wickedness, because of lack of consideration for others, because of cheapening of the life's values, even because of discourtesy on the roads by road users, healthy lives can be affected and at worst, death can ensue. Healthy bodies are put at risk because of several factors and more. Restoration of health, however, comes through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ gives us the healing and that through the power bestowed on him through God. God also gave power of healing to the apostles. We read of the restoration of fertility to Sarah and her servants when Abraham had deceived Abimelech and told him that Sarah was her, his sister, hiding the fact that she, she was his wife. And they, she and her servants became infertile. But God restored it when Abraham prayed. He too was given the power of healing. We acknowledge the nurses and the doctors, the technicians, pharmacists, who, through their ministrations, through medication or x-rays or chemotherapy or radiotherapy or even surgery, they have the power of healing, whether or not they admit to it whether or not they admit that their power is God-given. Jesus used this particular healing of the man born blind to teach the Pharisees and others of spiritual blindness. First, Jesus did not look for sin. He did not condemn the man, quoting generational sin or curse. When his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? In reply to his disciples, Jesus revealed the purpose for which the man was born blind when he said, so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. He exposed the spiritual blindness of the Pharisees and Jews who constantly opposed him. He healed the darkness of my mind, said the blind man, the day he gave my sight to me. It was not sin that made me blind. It was no sin that made me see. Let others call my faith a lie or try to stir up doubt in me. Look at me now. Man can deny I once was blind, and now I see. Ask me not how, but I know who has opened up new worlds to me. This Jesus does what none can do. I once was blind, but now I see. Words from Fred Pratt. The spiritual healing which God provides through Christ is pronounced in Isaiah 53, verse 5. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. And in Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 14, Israel the nation of Israel, was calling to the Lord for healing. The only hope of redemption, the Lord. The only hope for spiritual healing in the words of the prophets, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be sure, I, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. It is only by putting our trust in God by acknowledging our failures that we can be restored, that our minds and holes and souls can be made right again. Spiritual healing is necessary because of man's sin, yours and mine. Because of backsliding, Jeremiah says, Return, O faithless children, I will heal your faithfulness. And spiritual healing is provided for those who turn to God in their weakness. He heals the broken. He heals those who are broken hearted. He binds up their wounds. Spiritual healing is available for the repentant. And in those well known words of Second Chronicles chapter seven verse fourteen, 
If my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Physical healing, like spiritual healing, can only be achieved through intercession. Moses interceded on behalf of his sister who had become leprous. He cried out to the Lord, O oh God, please heal her. This was a case of her own sin against Moses and against God. She wasn't healed immediately, but through Moses' intercession, she became healed again. Brothers and sisters, Jesus would heal by saying, Your sins are forgiven. On occasion, go and sin no more. But often, through his compassion, he merely acknowledged the faith of the person being healed. The woman with the hemorrhage of blood and the restoration of sight to the blind, in this case two blind men, as recorded in Matthew chapter 9. Another example of intercession and faith was with the healing of the mute demoniac whose friends brought him to Jesus. Faith, their faith. Deliverance from the sick is vividly portrayed in verses 7 to 20 of Psalm 107. Some were sick because of their sinful ways and because of their iniquities. They endured affliction. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from destruction. What healing, brothers and sisters? What faith? Freeing our bodies from illness, freeing our country from illness is a charge to all of us. Freeing our minds and souls from spiritual illness enables us to look at the bigger picture, the picture of a decadent country, a decadent world, a world gone wrong. We cannot quote too often the passage from Corinthians as we are called to, if my people humble themselves, pray, seek God's face, and turn from their wicked ways. There is so much unrest in the world, so many natural disasters, or so it would seem, happening almost simultaneously. Wars, famines, pestilence, death, even misinformation as mentioned earlier continues to plague this world. Earthquakes, hurricanes, volcanic eruptions, flooding, and more, all telling us that we have misused and abused the earth which God has bestowed on us. We can only tap into the gifts of the Spirit, of which one is the gift of healing, by being in constant touch with God. As we continue to ask for God's healing, as we petition ourselves and intercede on behalf of us, let us sing with assurance the inspired words of Patrick Prescott. The right hand of God is healing in our land, healing broken bodies, minds, and souls. So wondrous is its touch, with love that means so much, when we are healed by the right hand of God. As we bring healing to individuals, let us look at the bigger picture in bringing healing to our land, to the people of our land, to the people of the world. Spiritual healing, yes, will bring us closer to our Creator, closer to our Healer, closer to indeed to the very source, the very well-being of our minds, bodies, and souls, making us into transformed beings of our Creator. Listen to the impassioned plea of William Cowper. Heal us, Emmanuel, hear our prayer. We wait to feel thy touch. Deep wounded souls to thee repair, and Saviour we are such. As we continue to pray for ourselves to intercede on behalf of others, as we continue to ask God to increase our faith, as we repent of our sins and listen to what he has to say, as we hear from heaven and obey, there our sins will be forgiven 
and our land will be healed. And we listen to Charles Wesley when he says, Thy power and truth and love divine, the same from age to age. A word, a gracious word of thine, the most inveterate plague can cure. And we ask God to continue to heal us as individuals, as communities, as a country, because we look to him for comfort, for succor, for healing, for the abandonment of sin. Only he can make things right. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for times when we can come to you, when we can know we can reach out our hand and you will take our hand in yours. You will take our lives into your hands. We will take our country into your hands. Lord, there is so much. There is so much overwhelming us that sometimes we do cry out. Let our cries come to you, Lord, in sincerity and in faith. And may we always remember that you are the one. You are the healer. You are the settler of minds and souls. You are the one, the power, which will be passed on as you deem fit. Lord, help us and show us the way. Amen.
Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to us. When we were beset as a city under siege, we had said in our alarm, We are driven far from your sight. But you heard our supplications when we cried out to you for help. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts haughtily. Be strong, and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Brothers and sisters, go now, confident in the knowledge of God's steadfast love for you, assured of the healing touch of Jesus upon you, and emboldened by the transforming power of the Holy Spirit within you. Go in peace, and may the God of peace go with you, now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen. For being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.